Hey guys, I'm back. Coffee with Steph. Mm. Should you be concerned about algorithms, learning algorithms in coding, especially as a beginner? Short answer is no, because it's very rare that you're going to have to write complex algorithms in code these days. No, 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 no. The practicality, excuse me, the reality of practical coding and real world coding is that algorithms are are almost non-existent part of it all in terms of you having to come up with some brilliant complex algorithms. Very, very rare. No, the complexity in 99% of the software is in architecture. Architecture is much, 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 much more important to learn than algorithms. So if you have courses where they're teaching, oh, you got to learn this algorithm, that, that's all BS for the most part. No, no, it's architecture that matters most. So how do you get to there? How do you get to becoming good at architecture. Well, good architecture comes down to really uh, understanding your foundation really well and extending it from there. Foundational concepts, foundational techniques in coding, uh, whether you be writing HTML and CSS or writing JavaScript or Python or Java. Some of the basic rules are universal. Simplicity in your code, self-describing code, consistency in the code uh, uh, practicing the cold style, if you will, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to teach that here because I assume you guys are beginners. But with that, with those foundations in place, this extends into architecture. The best architectures are simple. There's almost self-describing in a sense, and they allow for you to be able to build clean apps that are more easily debugged and extended if you have a good architecture. That is really the key to it all. The, the need for a complex algorithm within some app, again, for the most part, is pretty rare uh, these days, with some exceptions. So it's important that you concentrate on what's important in the real world. That's foundation. You learn your foundation through good foundation training, then mini projects. And then what you want to do is you want to go out in the real world and start doing little mini projects. It's kind of like fighting. Maybe martial arts would relate to this as well. When I was learning how to box, for example, I first learned how to hold my hands properly. I first learned the basic punches, the basic defense. I learned how to stand properly, how to balance the weight on the legs properly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Once I had those foundations down, then we got into light sparring, very light sparring. And then from there we build up, we build up. Light sparring is kind of the equivalent of little mini projects in coding. But then once you get comfortable with those mini projects, once you get comfortable with light sparring, controlled sparring, then you get in there, you do real sparring. And same thing with like Grappling, for example, judo. When I first learned judo, I learned how to, you know, balance and break falls. Then you learn the basic uh, sweeping techniques, some basic hip throws, etc. And then you get in there, and we would do kind of like controlled sparring in judo, where you know we try to pull a certain type of uh, I don't know hip throw. You pull seal negi or something like that, and that's all we did. We learn how to do this, and this is not real sparring. This is like mini projects, but it's it's a bridge to the real sparring. And once we've done a bunch, where we have like you know a handful of techniques under our belt, and we have our basic balance in place, then we jump in and we actually do real sparring. Where we can do whatever we want. That's how you should do it in coding. You learn your foundation, you do little mini projects, and then you got to go out there and do something for real. So a lot of people they go to boot camps because they say I want to do a stage. I want to do a stage. You don't have to go to a boot camp to get a stage at a company. You do your foundation, you do some mini projects, and then you go out there and you reach out to small businesses or local companies, say, listen, I, I want to do some stage work. This is what I know. I've done these mini projects. Can you bring me in? Guaranteed you're going to find some stage work. And you're not going to get paid at first, probably, but that's okay because you're getting free education at this point. And then you're going to learn how you apply all those basic concepts I talked about and you know the simplicity and self-describing variables, blah, 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 blah. You put that into your actual coding in a real project. In software development, just like in a fight, 
you can't be guaranteed that you're going to be, use this particular framework or this particular technique. Every fight is different. Every project is different. So that's why you've got to be able to fall back on your fundamentals and apply those fundamental principles and technique and adjust based on the needs of the particular project or just based on the needs of the fight. That's how you should do it. So my courses are designed around that premise. I do have project-based courses, but they're not there to be the blueprints for all your projects. In fact, they're not there at all for that. They're just there. They're bridging. They're there to show you how to sort of put the, how one way you put the code together to do something. What I do encourage though is that you get out there and actually do something for real. So you may go out there after you do the foundation training and then you, you, you understand your basis of HTML and your CSS and your JavaScript and your PHP and you understand server side coding and request response cycle, client versus server. You understand how to PHP and JavaScript work together. And then from there, you look, okay, I, I'm, I'm pretty good with some, you know, these simple things. I'm pretty good at putting together this stuff. Okay, let's see what we can do. So you go out there and you see a client and you're going to see what their needs are. And at this point, you're going to have a base of knowledge, foundational knowledge, and then you're going to be able to approach uh, the project with educated eyes and say, okay, I'm going to, for this project, it's a little bit more substantial. I need a proper framework. So if you're in Python, you decide to do it through Python then you would learn Django. But because you have a background in your HTML and your CSS and you do the Python, for you to learn Django from the Django site will be pretty easy. Because what, what they do is they solve the biggest problem for you. The Django framework solves the biggest problem for you. They give you that architecture, that blueprint about how more substantial apps should be structured. Django is in Python, in PHP, Laravel does that for you. It provides that structure. Not only does it provide a series of libraries that supercharges the coding process, it provides that structure. And it allows you to execute all those fundamental principles and techniques within the, that structure. Again, remember, the hardest part about building most apps is not in algorithms. The hardest part is in the overall structure of the code base. That's the hard part. That's the hard part. So I hope that helps a bit of a, a nerd discussion going down the rabbit hole. I'm just helping you guys to understand how my courses are very different from anybody else's out there. They're based on 23 years of experience as a developer, but I also leverage my experience in martial arts, my experience in business, in other areas as well. These are universal principles and ideas that I found to be very, very successful. Like for instance, my camera work, you know, to learn how to use the camera really well at the end of the day, this I'm using a cinema camera here, I had to learn the fundamentals of exposure, they call it, the, 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 tri the exposure triangle. Learning about f-stop, learning about ISO, learning about uh, well, color balance, and a few other things as well. And these are basic things that apply to any camera. So when I finally understood these basic, the basic aspects of, makes, of what makes a picture look good, all of a sudden, I can make a picture look good in my seven and a half thousand dollar camera, or my uh, DSLR, or even my cell phone. I, I started understanding, not to say that the cell phone is going to look as good as a seven and a half thousand dollar camera, but the point is, is when I understood the, fundama the fundamentals, I was able to take any camera and make it that much better, right? So I hope this makes sense. I always try to relate different fields because. One of the things I always look for in my life is these universal principles. And one of them is like going back to fundamentals. Any experienced martial artist will tell you that's the key. Any experienced person in cinema or camera and photography will tell you that's the key foundation. Any experienced developer will tell you that's the key to being a great developer's foundation. All right. Back to my coffee. <laughs>